hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about slope or the rate of change in the specific context of linear functions. So I'll start with some definitions and a formula, and then we'll do some examples together using graphs and points. So we say that the slope or the rate of change of a linear function is given by the following. So we use m as the letter to represent slope, and we say m is equal to the change in output divided by the change in input. So this is taking a ratio of how the outputs change with respect to the inputs. This is just the way we're defining to look at how the function changes over time. So how do the outputs change as the inputs change? Then we can summarize this with mathematical notation using delta y over delta x. So here that triangle is a delta, and this represents change in. So in math, we often use the delta symbol to represent some sort of change. So here we have change in output divided by change in input, which we could also write as delta y over delta x, given that y is the output. And if you've seen slope or rate of change before, you may have heard rise over run. So this is just meant to give you a reminder of rise being the vertical change and run being the horizontal change. So it's the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. I personally like to think of the change in output over the change in input, but if you've heard rise over run, that's where that comes from. Then we can expand this even further by writing this as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So this is just meant to indicate that in order to find the change in y and find the change in x, we're gonna choose two points on our line and use those as our x and y values to find the slope. So we use them in this formula by finding the total change in y, that's the difference in the y values, and then the change in x, that's the difference in the x values. So here we would say that x1, y1 and x2, y2 are any two points on the line. So you can choose any two points you want to do this formula with because the rate of change will always be the same between any two points. That's what distinguishes a linear function. Before we move on, I just want to mention that here I'm using y as the output. So you might also see this as f of x instead of y. So I'm assuming here that y is some output to some function, but you might also see this formula written as delta f of x over delta x which would then mean we're using function notation for everything. So instead of x1, y1, we'd have x1, f of x1, so that f of x1 is the output that goes with x1, and then we'd have x2, f of x2, since f of x2 is the output that goes with the input. Then we would rewrite our slope formula as f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. So this is just a different way to write the same thing. I think it's really nice to understand the function notation, but it can get really messy as we keep doing it. So I'm just gonna stick to y and x because I think it really simplifies things. Okay, so let's get into our first example. So in this example, let's identify the slope from the graph that I'm going to show you. So here is our linear function. Let's say it's y equals f of x. So our function is f and we'll call y the outputs. So as we're looking at this, I'm noticing a few things. First, I see that this function is increasing, so we're always going uphill as we move from left to right. This means that our slope is going to be positive. So increasing as a line means we have a positive rate of change. So as we're trying to calculate that slope, we remember that slope is m, which is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So to calculate this from the graph, I'm going to find some points where I can clearly see where they are on the graph. We're just gonna trust the graph too, that they're not like off by just the slightest bit and trust that they really do cross at those marks. So I'm seeing points here at zero, negative one and two, two, but then I also see another one at four, five or negative two, negative four, et cetera. So we could use any two points, and if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and try this instead with two different points, but I'm going to use zero, negative one, and two, two. So I just wanna look at the change between these two points, and I wanna do the change in y over the change in x. So I notice vertically, I go up by three, and then I go right by two to get between these two points, going from left to right. 
So this up by three is our delta y, and this right by two is our delta x, and we put them together in a fraction or a ratio, we're getting three over two. So we would say m equals three over two is the slope of this line. And this corresponds to that movement of up three, right two, up three, right two. So we did this with the graph, but I just wanna show you how you could do this by just choosing two points. So we're gonna use the coordinates of those points we chose and practice with our formula. So our formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I'm gonna use my points zero, negative one, and two, two. I'll choose zero, negative one as my first point, so x1, y1, and I'll choose two, two as my second point, so x2, y2. Okay, so now we need to just put these in the formula. So I do y2 minus y1, that's two minus a negative one, divided by x2 minus x1, two minus zero, and then I simplify. So on the numerator, the top of the fraction, those two negatives become a positive, so I have two plus one, and the denominator on the bottom of the fraction, that's just two. So I have two plus one over two, which then simplifies to three over two. And that's the same slope we got just by counting the difference, but I just wanna show you here that we can also use the formula. So before we move on, I just wanna make one more comment. We have future videos where we talk about writing the full equations. Here we're just talking about slope, but I just wanna tell you the equation really quick. So I notice here the vertical intercept is at negative one. So this means my B value would be negative one, and I could write this as f of x equals three halves x minus one. So this is going to be the formula for this line. We'll practice more how to do this later. I just want to mention it here. All right, I just want to do one more example where we identify the slope from the graph. We'll get lots of practice with slope, don't worry. So here I have another function. Let's say this is again y equals f of x. And I'm noticing that the function is decreasing. So our previous function was increasing, and now we are decreasing as we move from left to right. So this means that our slope is going to be a negative value. This is just a good check for yourself whenever you're doing the slope calculation to make sure you know if it should be a positive or a negative slope, and then just to check your final answer that you are in fact getting that. So here I'm thinking the slope should be negative, and let's go ahead and find it. So remember, the slope is the change in y, or the change in output, over the change in x, which is the change in input. So we're looking at delta y over delta x, and I'm just going to choose some points where I can clearly tell where they are on the graph. So I'm seeing points at negative 1, 7, 0, 3, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 5. So we can choose any two of these points. I'm just going to choose two that are close together. So I'm choosing 0, 3, and 1, negative 1. And we want to look at the change between these two points as we move from left to right. So as I look between these points, I'm noticing that we go down by four and then right by one, down by four, right by one, down by four, right by one, etc. So here the slope would be negative four as our delta y and then one as our delta x. So we have negative four over one and as a fraction, this simplifies just to be negative four. So when we do a number divided by one, we just get the number back. And so we have negative four as our slope. Okay, so I just wanna finish by showing us again how we could use the formula for this. So we have that m is the change in y over change in x, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I'm going to use the point zero, three and one negative one. Remember, you could use any two points. I'm just going to pick these two. And so x1, y1 is our 0, 3, and x2, y2 is our 1, negative 1. Also, I am just picking them this way. You could also label them in the opposite order. You could do x2, y2 as the first point, the 0, 3, or vice versa. So just know you can pick however you want. It just has to be x1, y1 together. That's one point. And then x2, y2 together. That's the other point. So our formula will have y2 minus y1. So for us, that's negative one minus three. And then that gets divided by x2 minus x1. So one minus zero. Then as I simplify, the numerator is negative four and the denominator is just one. And as a fraction, this negative four over one simplifies to just be negative four. And there we go, we got the same slope.
So as we wrap up this example, I just want to tell you the formula for this line to start making some connections here. So I noticed that three is the vertical intercept. That's the place on the vertical axis that the line intersects. And so the formula would then be negative four X, where negative four is our slope, and then plus three for that vertical intercept. So we'll do more of that later, but I just couldn't leave without telling you the formula for the line. All right, so that is our introduction to slope. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.